All right, hey everybody, I'm back, and uh, as you can see, I have mud bags, mud, mud bags, mud box back open, and uh, what I have here is just the um, rock AO and the normal map applied to the rock, and uh, it is kind of hard to see, but I think it looks like it's going to work well. Another thing I was going to mention is I completely redid the UVs. Um, they were really messed up, so I went into 3DS Max and uh, redid them. Uh, and as you can see, it looks like the normal map looks good, the AO looks good. It looks a bit messy because it's hard to... It'll, it'll look better when we uh, actually get it onto a uh, the mesh, and as you can see, there's the seam, so it'll be pretty easy to hide. It goes up the back somewhere, I can't even really tell where. Okay, so with that, um, I'm going to go into Photoshop. I have to do... Um, I don't know if I want to, I'm not going to exit out of that quite yet. Um, <coughs> let's go ahead and go into here, and let's go ahead and open up the texture that we originally, um, yeah, let's at least open up this. I don't think we need to open up the rock, but we need to open up this. Let's go to the texture. Photoshop uh, alphas. Yeah, I suppose we can use this as an alpha. So so let's go ahead and just uh, to start with, let's go ahead and drag this over. Alright, perfect. And now let's set this to overlay. Screen. Just scroll through and see which ones work. And then probably darken will be the best. Darken's probably the best. Alright, there we go. Darken or... No, let's multiply. So yeah, let's leave it on multiply. Multiply looks good. So now let's go ahead and just create a uh, layer out of the background. And let's duplicate the layer. And so we're working on a copy. Now what we're going to have to do is create a tileable texture. So let's offset this. This is a 1024 by 1024, so we're going to offset it by 512 and 512. Um, this texture is going to be kind of hard to do. That's okay. Let's see if we can work with this. Hold the stamp tool. <coughs> Excuse me. Generally, you want to grab stuff like this that kind of perpetuates um, things a bit. Keeps it going and so it looks like it transitions somewhat naturally. The thing I don't like about doing this is. Um, it creates a blurry texture in places if you don't do it quite right. And uh, that's why I like creating textures in ZBrush so much more. Um, I don't think I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that for this, but for future reference, if you can, 
always make a texture in, uh, in ZBrush because it is so much better to do. down a bit. Let's do the same here. Go over this. Get rid of the foliage there. Uh, go ahead and get rid of that. <coughs> Normally I would uh, actually add some like foliage stuff over this, but it doesn't really make sense in this case because we're going to be on Corbon. So to have foliage on there just doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to just go in and replace all of this foliage, this little bit, bits and pieces of foliage to um, make it look more dry and I'm gonna give it a uh, I'm gonna give it a like an orange hue it's too repetitive um, Pretty good. All right. <coughs> Let's maybe duplicate this layer to darken it up a bit. And where? That's where it's gonna be. You can use that to actually see where what what space your model is gonna be utilizing. So with that, I think um, I'm gonna add a. Um, Gonna duplicate this and then control U change the hue to a red or an orange. Hmm. Not not going very evenly, I don't particularly like that. You know, what might actually work better is just creating a new layer. Naming layers is always a good idea. I 
just go to this new layer and let's go with an orange. I think, like, an, yeah, maybe more of a golden brown or something. So that <coughs> paint over it, and then let's set this to overlay. What that looks like. Darken maybe. That one looks really good. Multiply. I like that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might go with multiply. Soft light isn't bad either. that one better. That gives it a bit of a more red, reddish look I think, or um, a darker look. So I'm going to <coughs> ask control shift S, control shift S, yeah. Instead of saving in the alphas, I'm going to save in Photoshop, textures, and I'm going to call this um, <coughs> Yeah. Um, I'm going to call it Diffuse. And turn then Control Shift S, and I'm going to save it as a TIFF. TIFF, I believe. It's been a while since I used UDK, so I think it's a TIFF. Interleaved, LZP, yep, that's all right. Discard layers and save a copy. All right, now let's go ahead and um, we're gonna want to create a normal map. And let's go to Filter, NVIDIA Tools. This is just a um, com the uh, NVIDIA plugin tool. Nothing special. Um, just press OK. That. I think that will work. Um, honestly, I would be using Dedu. I just got it, but um, I have no idea how to use it yet. So, um, let's go and say this is a TIFF, and let's call it normal. Normal. Mm, let's call it DDN. I like that that abbreviation better. So DDN, and then that's okay, and let's go over to UDK. Now, um, let's go ahead and go in here, let's do, do new import, uh, let's go with import, uh, actually I don't like that, let's go with new, because I think if I remember correctly, that's how you create a new package. So let's call this package Corbon. Let's stick with it. Uh, Sith Temple. That's what I'm looking for. Sith Temple. Grouping. We're bringing. I think we're gonna bring out and bring in the model first. So uh, I'm just gonna shorthand static mesh. Uh, Uh, I'm not going to recognize that. Let's go with models. I'll recognize that better. Let's call it Rock uh, 01. Let's go with a static mesh. Static mesh. Is there anything? Um. Well, let's just, I guess, create an anim set just to get the package in place and the uh, everything else. Add an underscore here too. I like my spaces. Okay, it's all good. Um, I don't care about that at all. And 
let's go ahead and save this and so it shows up maps new folder let's call it um, yeah just Sith temple open that up and save it in here and so when we go back up there's our package and um, let's go ahead and import um, import our model so we're looking at 3ds max and that is not what I'm looking for Oh, duh. I forgot one of the most important parts. I forgot to export the FBX file. And I have a material on it, so it will probably carry that over, and I want to remove that and just have a base bl uh, blend material. That's what it is. Blend or. I've heard that it's best to have Fong, so I might do that. And open Max Saves Rocco One. Let's go ahead and bring that over. Show in viewport. And Let's make it a fong. Save this file. Export. Export selected. In here, it's uh, of course it's not in the right place. Go back up. Portfolio. New portfolio. Scenes. The temple outside. Max exports. Rock. A one, and let's save it as an FBX. Just hit OK, and let's go back into the UDK, and let's import sign max exports FBX open models. That's all right. It's a static mesh over at import mesh LODs. I don't have mesh LODs. Import more targets. It's not a skeletal mesh. Um, that's all okay. And that's okay as well. It's always out of date. Uh, one thing I didn't do is I did not actually smooth out the normal, so we'll see if it looks okay with harsh normal normals normals. Let's go ahead and drag this right on into our scene. It's quite large, larger than I thought it would be, but that's I think that'll be okay. And now let's go ahead and bring our texture in or our textures I should should say. Let's um save this and let's import import outside photoshop textures we're gonna need to bring oh so it allows to bring in photo uh, photoshop files that's cool uh, i don't know if that's new or if i've just been working with unity and cryengine too much what other files can you bring in um, well, I don't care, I'll just bring that in. Hopefully it'll work well. So this is our diffuse texture. So we're gonna have it on blend blend opaque. Uh that's correct. And um I think th that's all good. Texture world group. Yeah. All right, so that's good. Let's uh, give it a texture group. So texture. I don't think I had a capital on the model, so textures. And 
press OK. Let's fully load. All right. Now we have our uh, quite awesome looking texture. Now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, import the rest of our textures. I believe those are in another folder somewhere. Nope. I think it would be in uh, Mudbox Exports, Textures, yeah, there we go. Unfortunately, none of them are readable, so I'm going to uh, file open Let's go to outside, lead box exports, and I don't know that we need to actually set up a separate AO system in the material because we have it in the the texture. I think it'll be okay, but we'll see. Go ahead and save this. Let me just save it as a PSD. I'm gonna actually save it in um, Photoshop textures. Rocco one DNN. Um, so one DNN. Let's do uh, Rocco one bake DNN. Let's come back over here. Not over there. We need to open up the other. There we go. Rock blocky one. Say this, just say this as a PSD. And put DNN F, DNN. All right, that's much better. So import. Now we have our Rocco one blocky DNN and our bake DNN. Let's go ahead and open those two up. They're going to be in textures. But we need to change, uh, first of all, the compression settings to normal map, and also the uh, um, texture world group to normal map, world normal map. I think, yeah, world normal map. Um, I can't quite remember, but I think. Uh, this might set it to DXT5, which we don't want. Um, I, I, I guess we'll see. What is that? Convert. Does it pull up any information? No, it doesn't. So, I guess we'll just we'll do that. See how it uh, it works. Okay. Why is it not fully loaded? It needs to fully load every time. Come on. Then, okay, that's on normal map, so that's gonna be okay. Alright, so now we have both of our textures. And, let's see, is this DXT5 or D? Okay, it's DXT1, good, 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 good. In my previous tutorial, I actually go off uh, of why you want a DXT1 in that bot, the right hand part over there rather than a DXT5, it, it just takes out way too much memory. It'd be like, it's like three times as large of a file. And now, what we're gonna do is do a new, um, let's do rock underscore 01 underscore MAT. Let's set it to material. Material. Let's set materials. Yep. Drag this off to the side for a second to make sure this is all right. Yes. 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 All right. So now, let's go ahead and just get our textures in here. Uh, come over here and hold T, and just uh, that'll bring in each one. Got that, got that, got that, and T. So there we go. Now we can blow this up, and let's go ahead and uh, drag this over so we can see more. Plug 
this into the diffuse and we're going to need to do for these is we are going to have to um, we're going to have to lerp them go ahead and bring over the linear interplane I think L holding L and pressing yeah so that that also creates a um, a lerp node bring that into A bring that into uh, B and uh, hold on. How do I middle mouse drag right mouse? Oh no, Alt. Uh, shift maybe. I'm trying to remember. Oh, there it is. Control Alt to select. Um, Control Alt left mouse drag to select an entire group. And control to uh, drag them around. I can go into normal and hold the phone. Oh, so it needs an alpha, alpha information. I wonder if that works. definitely helps. You can see the difference there. Plug that in, it really pops for this. So, um, okay, so now we have that all kind of set up in a very, very basic manner. Um, uh, I might do I'll I'll bring in uh, specular power and uh, just use this as the specular uh, just for now. Maybe if that works. Fifteen, I like fifteen. Yeah, it, it'll work for now. All right close out of that and let's go to our material and first let's save our package and let's go ahead and drag our material on there and let's see how it looks man I'm, I'm really lagging I'm not sure what's going on Um, you know, I think I really should soften those normals. See a lot of hard edges in here. Um, Probably about how far I'll be away from. Uh, let's see. Probably this is probably about how far I will be away from uh, a rock. So if I just I drag this down here, and maybe. Uh, oh wow, that's interesting. And I can do that. I thought um, E and uh, Q W E R are uh, a lot of times shortcuts for rotating, scaling, and stuff like that. So I thought that might be what it is, what it was, but it actually elevates and de-elevates you in this. Um, honestly, I think that looks really good from this distance, so... Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um... This far, this far, this far. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to soften up those normals. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know, a certain distance, I think the unsoft nor normals actually really help the uh, sharpness of the rock. But if you're too close, it looks really ugly. I don't know. I'll see, I'll see what I can do with it. But um, I think I'm going to call this the end of the tutorial. Um, I have other tutorials on material setups and stuff like that. I'm going to probably go into a more advanced material setup with this. Um, probably something to do with um, a shader that allows sand to be on top of the rock in different places based on slope. Uh, I might put up a tutorial on how to do that, but there's already tutorials on how to do that. So uh, it just depends on how different mine is from theirs, I guess. But I'm going to go ahead and call this the end of the tutorial, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did, and um, uh, I will see you in the next one. Oh, by the way, please like, comment, subscribe, please. Thank you guys. Bye.